while the British ruled India, a man was born who was to play a major role in the destiny of Assam. Much of what Assam is today is what he dreamt of, worked for and fought for. Born on the 6th of June, 1890 at Roha, district Naugong, he was named Gopinath Bordoloi. His father, Bodhishwar Bordoloi, was a doctor and his mother died when he was 12 years of age. His elder sister brought him up under great hardship. As a boy, Bordoloi grew up close to the people of Assam. As long as he lived, this closeness did not diminish. He was sent to the Cotton Collegiate School in Guwahati for his studies. Gopinath, if I have freedom in my love, in my soul I am free, for birds alone that shore above enjoy such liberty. He completed his intermediate in Cotton College where he led a very active cultural life. For further studies, he went to Calcutta in 1909 and joined the Scottish Church College there. Momentous events were sweeping Bengal then. Lord Curzon, who had partitioned Bengal in 1905, was making an attempt to curb the growth of the anti-British feeling. Before the final examinations of B.A., his father and elder brother died one after another, leaving the family in dire financial conditions. But his sister urged him to continue his M.A. education on her earnings from weaving silk clothings for women. In 1914, having got his M.A. in history, Baudeloy returned to Assam. The anti-British voices that he had heard raised defiantly in Calcutta was echoed in Assam by Tarun Ram Phukan. Between Tarun Ram Phukan and Baudeloy, a close relationship began. The nationalist leader guided Baudeloy at every turn. No, no, Gopinath, you must not feel bad. To me, support in a pie, bear Pabonalagi. To me, Cotton College of Lecturer, support in a pie, Bob Hale Hulbuza. It's good, Gopinath, you didn't get the job. Otherwise, you would have lost you to the English. Kinto Moy, Basito Takiboy Lagibo. Hmm. One has to make a living. I mean, we are going to the school, Kulisu, and we are looking for a headmaster. Pukan was right. The British government's loss was Assam's gain. Baudeloy joined the school. Simultaneously, he started studying for law examinations. In 1917, he joined the Guwahati Bar. In the same year, he got married to Shurabala, the only daughter of late Bhumikanta Mazindar Barua of North Guwahati. Gandhiji's call for Swaraj and non-cooperation spread like wildfire in the country. The Assam Association was dissolved and its members joined the National Congress. Baudeloy could not but heed this call. He suspended his legal practice. As the movement gathered momentum, a large number of students of the Guwahati Cotton College went on strike. Baudeloy organized a strike fund to support the students. He became the Joint Secretary of the Guwahati Congress Committee and became more involved with organizational work and propagating Gandhiji's teaching in the villages.
the quiet observer was being drawn into the whirlpool of action. In August 1921, Gandhiji came to Assam. In the presence of a crowd of nearly 25,000, Gandhiji set fire to a pile of foreign clothes. The non-cooperation movement began to blaze in Assam. On November 30th, 1921, Pukan was arrested. A meeting was held in protest. The disciple of Pukan had become the new voice of Assam. In December 1921, while getting ready to attend the Ahmedabad Congress session, Baudelaire received news that the police might arrest him. Disguised in a turban, he left. The police came later and found him gone. In Ahmedabad, Gandhiji advised him to publicize the speeches of Pukan and carry the message of freedom into every house in Assam. On his return, Baudeloy was arrested. In jail, Baudeloy had the time to ponder and reflect upon the philosophy behind the political activities that he had got involved in so deeply. By the time he came out of jail a year later, he found his life's mission to fight for an Assam which under no circumstances would lose its special identity. When the Congress passed the famous Lahore resolution of total boycott in 1929, Pukan and Baudeloy deferred. They felt that the British government had to be fought also from within the government in order to oppose its repressive measures. Pukan and Baudeloy resigned from the Congress party on account of this difference of opinion. For several years now, Baudeloy had been the chairman of the Guwahati municipality. It was around this time that he began to popularize two demands that Assam had been making for a long time, a separate high court and a university. By 1937, Baudeloy had rejoined the Congress and was elected to the Assam Legislative Assembly. And although it was the single largest party in the Assembly, the Congress High Command did not allow the Assam Congress to enter into coalition with other parties. Eighteen months later, in 1938, Subhash Chandra Bose, the then Congress President, allowed Baudeloy to form a coalition government in Assam. The Baudeloy like Ministry lasted for 14 months. I would like to start with a tax on the tea planters. His government introduced agricultural income tax on tea planters. The rich British planters were furious. But in one year, the tax amounted to rupees 40 lakhs. Taxing the rich was matched by reducing the taxes on the poor. Land revenue was cut by 50% on smaller holdings. The poor peasants perpetually burdened with debts and constantly faced with the forced sale of land at last breathed a sigh of relief. The tribal lands encroached by immigrants from Bengal during the Saudullah ministry were once again vacated by Baudeloy. This pleased the tribals immensely. The Second World War broke out. The British government declared India as one of the warring nations. The Congress Working Committee at Varda thought this declaration was quite arbitrary. 
the Congress committee directed all ministries to resign in protest. Bordeloy resigned. The Congress soon embarked upon a Satyagraha campaign to generate public opinion against the imperialistic war. The Satyagrahi and his colonial rulers were bound to clash. On December 10, 1940, Bordeloy offered Satyagraha at the church's field in Guwahati. He was arrested and sentenced to one year of rigorous imprisonment at the Jorhat jail. While at jail, Bordeloy sadly heard of the eclipse of the civil liberties all around and of the use of the Indian Press Act by the British government to muzzle the patriotic newspapers, printing presses and confiscate anti-war leaflets and pamphlets. Six months later, Bordeloy was released on health grounds. On December 6, 1941, the police lati charged an anti-war procession of the students of the Guwahati Cotton College. Forty student boys and girls were injured. Bordelai led a move to remove the deputy commissioner responsible for this police barbarism. But the British government refused to listen. The empire was in a state of panic both from within and without. As the World War II continued, the Congress met in Bombay on 7th August 1942 to discuss the issues of war and freedom. The resolution passed, called for an immediate transfer of power. On 9th August, Gandhiji and all the other national leaders were arrested and the Congress was declared to be unlawful. While returning from Bombay at Dhubri railway station, Bordeloy was arrested and taken to Johar jail. In jail, while the leaderless mass outside were engaged in a life and death struggle against their hated rulers, Bordeloy passed his days behind bars in deep agony. It was here in jail that he wrote several books about his two heroes Pukan and Gandhiji, about Rama whom he treated as an ideal man, a short fascinating biography of Buddha and also wrote on Jesus Christ and Prophet Muhammad. In jail, he also met quite a few of the popular heroes who later became legends like Kamala Miri and Kushal Kumar. On January 26, 1944, he was released on health grounds. Gandhiji invited him to Sevagram to recoup his health, but he could not stay there for long. He had work to do. On November 14, 1944, with three of his released colleagues, he attended the winter session of the Assam Assembly, and there he delivered a memorable speech in defense of civil liberties. We reappear as a party to continue the fight from within the legislature. However, thin our ranks might be, and however feeble our voice, it will continue to be raised against this evil, which has brought in its wake so much of misery. We shall continue to work for the elementary liberties of human beings, which in the name of war has been practically nullified. I mean, the liberty of speech and liberty of press. <coughs> The British government announced its decision 
to hold the general election in 1945. Gopinath Bardaloji won a resounding victory. The new Bordeloi ministry assumed office in, in February 1946. In 1946. The very next month, Bordeloi was to fight a battle for the survival of Assam. On March 1946, the Labour government in Britain decided to send a cabinet mission to explore the possibility of drafting a future constitution for India. According to the mission's plan, British India was arbitrarily divided in three groups. Assam was included in Group C. If this plan was to be accepted, then Assam with its proposed grouping with Bengal would cease to exist as a separate individual province. Assam was in turmoil. Every Assamese looked towards Bordeloi to save Assam. On April 1, 1946, Bordeloi had an interview with the cabinet mission where he made a forceful plea before it for retaining Assam as a separate province. He pointed out that Assam was already a province formed on linguistic and cultural basis, enjoying provincial autonomy and should be allowed to continue in the future setup as a full-fledged unit. But the cabinet mission stuck to its plan of forming groups. The Indian leaders and the local press were also divided on the issue of Assam. Bordelai once again turned to Gandhiji for guidance. Gandhiji did not fail him. If Assam keeps quiet, it is finished. No one can force Assam to do what it does not want to do. Assam must not lose its soul. But on February 20th, 1947, Atlee, the British Prime Minister, announced the British government's decision to transfer power by a date not later than June 1948. The new Viceroy, Lord Mountbatten, persuaded the Indian leaders to accept the division of India. The cabinet mission plan was abandoned and Lord Mountbatten accepted the fact that Assam would be a part of the Indian Union. On 15th August 1947, India became independent. The great struggle for retaining Assam's right to decide its own future ended on a happy note. Bordeloi lived for only three more years. It was too short a period for the proper working out of the innumerable plans he had set forth for Assam as its first chief minister. In 1948, the Bordeloi cabinet passed its industrial policy resolution, which outlined the industrial program for Assam. The Gauhati University was started in 1948. Assam Medical College and Engineering College were also founded during Bordeloi's time. The Gauhati High Court was established in 1948. Almost every institution that modern Assam can boast of can be said to have its beginning in those brief years when Bordeloi was the chief minister. He was made the chairman of a constitution subcommittee which framed the sixth schedule of the Constitution of India. On August 5, 1950, he died of a heart attack at his Uluberi residence. Assam had lost the man who shaped it. One of Bordeloi's own poems sums up his life well. The floral wreaths have withered. In deep solitary gloom I lost my way. You guided my way by the tune of your flute. My woodland is without a flower. Rushed in the song of life. My last arti, a prayer of resignation, will be at your feet. <laughs> 